Hello and welcome to Indus News live from Islamabad. I'm Naila Shudra and these are the headlines. United States, the battleground state of Wisconsin, has reconfirmed President-elect Joe Biden's win by over 20,000 votes after a recount. State election officials say the recount produced a minor change in the final breakdown of over 600,000 ballots. Meanwhile, Biden has named on all women communications team, choosing Jen Paskey as his White House press secretary. Romania's president has asked the government to resign and hold fresh elections within a year, calling the Russian-brokered ceasefire agreement with Azerbaijan a national great tragedy. President Armin Skarskyan said a technocrat interim government of national accord should be formed at the earliest. Prime Ministers of Russia, China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan are attending the 2020 SCO summit today. Pakistan will be represented by its Parliamentary Secretary for Foreign Affairs in the virtual summit. Apart from the SCO members, the four observer countries including Iran, Afghanistan, Belarus and Mongolia will also participate. Death toll by COVID-19 in the United States has crossed 266,000 with over 13.3 million cases. India has reported nearly 39,000 cases and 433 fatalities overnight, taking the death toll to over 137,000. Pakistan's death toll has crossed 8,000 with 40 new deaths and more than 2,800 cases in the last 24 hours. Globally, the virus has claimed 1.45 million lives and infected over 62.6 million people. People. And in football, Wolver Hamilton Wanderers beat Arsenal 2-1 in an English Premier League clash at the Emirates Stadium. Pedro Nito opened the scoring for Wolves in the 27th minute, but was equalized by Gabriel three minutes later. Daniel Poston then put Wolves ahead in the 42nd minute, with Arsenal failing to find an equalizer. News and details. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. In the United States, the battleground state of Wisconsin has reconfirmed President-elect Joe Biden's win by over 20,000 votes after a recount. State election officials say the recount produced minor changes in the final breakdown of over 800,000 ballots. U.S. President Donald Trump's struggle to claw his way back into the Oval Office through legal action is on a downward spiral. After setbacks in Georgia, Michigan and Pennsylvania, Biden's overall lead over President Trump in Wisconsin has grown by 87 votes after the recount. Trump's campaign requested a recount in battleground states, making allegations of widespread electoral fraud. Biden won the presidential election with 306 electoral college votes, leading Trump by over 6 million in popular vote. Meanwhile, the president-elect is set to receive his first intelligence briefing today. For the presidential transition picking pace, Biden unveiled his all-female senior press team. The team, led by Kate Bedingfield, comprises Jen Paskey as White House press secretary. Earlier on Sunday, President-elect Joe Biden sustained a hairline fracture in his midfoot after slipping while playing with his dog. 
Armenia's president has asked the government to resign and hold fresh elections within a year, calling the Russian brokered ceasefire agreement with Azerbaijan a great national tragedy. President Armin Skarsyan said a technocrat interim government of national court should be formed at the earliest. Skarsyan said the interim government could work for six months to one year and lead the country to early elections. He also called for major reforms to the constitution to establish better checks and balances on the government. Rebellious forces in Ethiopia's Tigray region claim to have shot down a military aircraft and retaken a town from federal forces. There was no immediate comment from the government or the military on the claims. A government-authorized manhunt is underway for rebel leaders in the Tigray after the army took control of the region's capital. State television said police have issued arrest warrants for 17 military officers on charges of treason, while warrants for 117 other senior officers have already been issued. Hundreds of people were killed and nearly 44,000 fled to neighboring Sudan during the fighting. After the killing of Iran's top nuclear scientist, the parliament has called for halting international inspections of the country's nuclear facilities. A statement signed by all lawmakers called for an immediate and punitive response to foreign aggression. It said the best way to retaliate against the killing of Mohsen Fakhrizadeh is to revive the brilliant nuclear industry of Iran. The lawmakers allege that Israel's role can be clearly seen in the assassination. They said the appeasing approach of some top Iranian officials towards the West emboldened Israel to take this step. It said in the recent sabotage activities of the United States and Israel in Iran demonstrated the fallacious nature of this narrative. In northern Iraq, a rocket attack has caused a large fire at an oil refinery, briefing halting operations. ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack in the Saladin province. Iraq's oil ministry says the fire broke out in fuel shortage tank at the Siniya refinery. No casualties were reported. The fire was put out and operations resumed within a few hours. Authorities say the operations were halted as security measures to prevent further damage. Houthi rebels say have, they have killed eight Yemeni soldiers in a rocket attack in a military camp in the Mara province. The Houthi-run al masira TV says seven other soldiers were wounded in the strike. Meanwhile, Yemeni army said seven civilians were killed in the Houthi rocket attack on a village in al hudaydah city. Military said ten others were also wounded. Yemen's Red Sea port city of Hudida is vital to lifeline for millions facing starvation. The city has seen a shaky ceasefire between government and Houthis after a United Nations-sponsored truce in Stockholm in 2018. In Sri Lanka, prison guards shot dead six inmates and wounded 35 others while controlling a riot on the outskirts capital of Colombo. Police say inmates were rebelling against overcrowding at the Mahara jail amid surging coronavirus cases. Two prison officers have been critically injured in the unrest. More than a thousand inmates in five prisons have tested positive for the coronavirus and at least two have died. About 50 prison guards have also tested positive. The prime ministers of Russia, China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan are attending the 19th SCO summit today. The summit is being virtually hosted by India, who will re be represented by a special envoy. Pakistan will be represented by its parliamentary secretary of foreign affairs. The four observer countries, including Iran, Afghanistan, Belarus and Mongolia, will also participate. Turkmenistan has been invited as a special guest. The annual prime ministers level summit deals primarily with with the trade and economic agenda of the organization. Pakistan says it fully supports the Palestinian people's right to self-determination. In a tweet, the Foreign Office said a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is imperative for peace. It called for the establishment of an independent Palestinian state based on pre-1967 borders with Jerusalem as its capital. The remarks come at the occasion of the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people. United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres said, and Turkey have also called for an end to the Israeli occupation of Palestine. The United Nations Chief took note of the expansion of illegal Israeli settlements and said they cause great misery to Palestinians. 
In Pakistan, 40 people have lost their lives to COVID-19 over the past 24 hours, raising the death toll to 8,025. The health ministry says over 2,800 tested positive for the virus overnight. The ministry said there are more than 48,000 active COVID-19 cases in the country. It said out of over 398,000 countrywide cases, more than 341,000 have recovered so far. The ministry said over 173,000 cases have been detected in the province of Sindh, while the Punjab has reported over 119,000 cases so far. India has recorded nearly 39,000 cases and 433 fatalities overnight, taking the death toll to over 137,000. The global number of deaths from the virus has crossed 1.45 million, with the caseload exceeding 62 million. More in this report. An unprecedented surge in coronavirus cases across the world has made it virtually impossible to imagine the return of normalcy. Canada is set to extend its restrictions for all travellers entering the country until January 2021. And authorities in Mexico warn the actual number of cases may be much higher due to low testing. The COVID-19 death toll in the US has crossed 266,000 with over 13 million cases. The top U.S. infectious disease expert has warned of a surge upon surge in the coming weeks. We're going to have to make decisions as a nation, state, right. city and family that we're in a very difficult time and we're going to have to do the kinds of restrictions of things we would like to have done, particularly in this, in this holiday season because we're entering into what's really a precarious situation because we're in the middle of a steep slope. British authorities say the risk of a third wave is imminent in the absence of right measures to curb the virus, while a curfew in Turkey has failed to contain the second wave, with the country reporting record high deaths for the seventh straight day. In another development, North Korea is stepping up disinfection work as cases rise in the peninsula. We are following prevention guidelines by disinfecting all equipment and facilities within reach. As the weather is getting cold, we are enhancing a checkup on people with fever. We will keep in mind that our enemy is carelessness and self-conceit when we proceed this disinfection work. Whereas South Korea has announced a ban on year-end parties among other curbs after China has also observed a slight uptick in cases with 18 infections reported on the mainland. In Brazil, candidates backed by President Jair Bolsonaro have suffered major defeats in the country's municipal elections. Voters returned to vote in 57 cities, including 18 state capitals, amid surging COVID-19 and pre-poll violence. In the country's financial hub, São Paulo, center-right Mayor Bruno Covas was re-elected for a new four-year term. President Jair Bolsonaro, candidate for São Paulo, mayor came up fourth in the first round of voting. In Rio de Janeiro, centrist Eduardo Paez emerged victorious instead of Bolsonaro, backed by Marcelo Siriva. Bolsonaro's supported candidates also suffered defeat in Fortaleza and Belém. The municipal election's outcome is likely to complicate Bolsonaro's re-election. The United Kingdom has ordered British telecommunication firms not to install the new Huawei 5G kit from September. In a statement, Digital Minister Oliver Dowden says London is setting out a plan for the removal of high-risk vendors. Dowden said unprecedented powers will be used to identify and ban equipment which pose a threat to national security. He said the government is collaborating with the Japanese firm NEC. He also mentioned plans to establish new research facilities to diversify the 5G supply chain. The minister said London has already marked an initial $333 million investment for the child. Earlier, Britain announced all Huawei equipment will be removed by 2027 after security fears and United States pressure. Huawei has termed the decision disappointing. It's now time for a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. 
The eruption of one of Indonesia's most dangerous volcanoes has caused panic and evacuation of nearly 3,000 residents. The government says no casualties have been reported so far, but the displaced need money and aid. Authorities have warned the nearby areas of hot clouds, lava avalanche and poisonous gas. They added the volcano has acquired the second highest level on the country's four-tier alert system due to its increasing threat. Indonesia has nearly 130 active volcanoes volcanoes more than any other country. Argentine prosecutors are investigating Diego Maradona's doctor for possible manslaughter following his death four days ago. Police in Buenos Aires have raided the house and private clinic of Leopoldo Luke. The police are trying to establish if there was negligence in Maradona's treatment following surgery. The 60-year-old died of a heart attack at his home where he was recuperating. Dr. Luke denies of any law wrongdoing. The football legend scored 34 goals in 91 appearances for Argentina, representing them in four World Cups. A former street dog in the Bolivian city of El Alto has found his calling as the co-pilot of a local taxi driver. More about this canine in this report. They say a dog is a man's best friend and a canine in Bolivia has become just that for a taxi driver. Cano was rescued by 57-year-old Santos Crispy, who began working as a taxi driver at the start of the pandemic. This year, Kano has been driving with owners since the pandemic started. Before then, we didn't go out. This year, since the lady started feeding him bones, she hired us to work as her taxi drivers. He has been my co-pilot every day for five to six months now. But before we didn't go out, he used to hop into the car and I used to let him. And eventually, he didn't want to get down. Now he looks for me when I go to work. The three-year-old mongrel hopped into Crispy's taxi seven months ago and has not looked back. Both have found comfort in one another's presence during these hard times. In the morning, Kano wakes up with his ears all flopped over, and for me, he's like a good luck charm, and it makes me want to work for some cash. My father always told me the sign of money was found in floppy ears. He approaches me with his little ears, and so I go out to work because I know I'll have money, and I have to have faith. Kano knows how to behave when passengers board the taxi and knows not to disturb them. Crispy and Kano help transport food for other street dogs around the city. Most stocks in the Asia-Pacific have declined as investors monitor surging COVID-19 in the region. The Kospi in South Korea and Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index have dropped over 1 percent. In Japan, the Nikkei 225 slipped over half a percent, while the Topix Index tumbled over 1 percent. Over in Australia, ASX 200 has shed nearly 1.5 percent. But mainland Chinese stocks bucked the trend, with both Shanghai Composite and Shenzhen Component adding around 1 percent. In football, Wolverhampton Wanderers beat Arsenal 2-1 in a Premier League clash at the Emirates Stadium. The Gunners sit 14th in the table after five losses in the 10 league games. Pedro Nito opened the scoring for Wolves in the 27th minute, but was equalized by Gabriel three minutes later. Daniel Poston then put up the Wolves ahead in the 42nd minute, with Arsenal failing to find an equalizer. This is Arsenal's worst start to a season since 1981. In another fixture, Chelsea played a goalless draw against Tottenham Spurs at Stamford Bridge, while Manchester United came behind to beat Southampton 3-2 at St. Mary Stadium. Meanwhile, AC Milan beat Fiorentina 2-0 at the San Soro to maintain their dominance on the Serie A table. Alessio Romagnoli and Franek Casey scored goals for the hosts. 
from Nigo put Milan ahead in the 17th minute and Casey added a second goal from a penalty 11 minutes later. Milan are now 21 Serie A games unbeaten since losing to Gino in March. They topped the table with 23 points from nine matches and five clear of the nearest rivals Inter Milan. In another fixture, Napoli thrash Roma 4-0 at the Stadio San Paolo. Lorenzo Insigni put Napoli ahead with a sublime free kick in the 30th minute. Fabian Ruiz, Dries Martinez and Matteo Politiano added three more goals in the second half to hand Roma their first defeat of the season. In cricket, England beat South Africa by four wickets at their second T20 international at the Parle to win the three-match series 2-0. South Africa were put to bat first and made 146 runs for the loss of six wickets in their limited overs. Skipper Quinton de Dock top scored with 30 runs while England's Adil Rashid took two wickets. In reply, England managed to reach the target in the final over thanks to David Milan's half-century. He was declared declared man of the match for his brilliant knock of 55 runs. Seven-time Formula One champion Luis Hamilton has won the Bahrain Grand Prix for Mercedes. The win marks the 95th victory of his career. Red Bull's Max Verstappen finished off second with his teammate Alexander Albon coming in at third. Hamilton also clinched the title in Turkey's two weeks ago. He has now won the last five races and 11 of the 15 so far this season. The race was dominated by a car crash for Romain Gorsjean, who managed to escape his vehicle after it was engulfed in flames. It's now time to take a look at the weather around the world. For the latest news updates, you can follow us on our social media at indus.news.